first up, we have um, Klana speaking about um, buy now, pay later boom um, and what it means for retail. Um, as we heard in our opening uh, keynote by Peter Sheldon, you know, there's a, there's a big uptake of buy now, pay later amongst um, both the min millennials and uh, the, the Gen Z. Um, some, some, some stats were like 45% of US adults um, use buy now, pay, pay later. Um, that otherwise doesn't fit into their regular budget. And we're seeing a, a trend of um, by the end of 2022, 44% of Generation Z buyers will have used buy now, pay later for at least uh, once, once you know, in the year. Um, today we have uh, Dan Spencer and, and Rob Beatty um, going to walk us through this. Um, Dan has worked in global partnerships since uh, 2018, focusing on retail growth with uh, and the support of uh, the partner network. I've had the great privilege over the years to, to, to work with Dan. Uh, he's, he has a wealth of experience um, in, in commerce. Um, so yeah, you know, welcome Dan. Um, and then we've got Rob, who's currently my partner manager at Lana. Uh, so Rob, Rob works with uh, the, T, the key technology providers and solution integrators, as well as, you know, agencies like us to bridge the gap between Klarna's partner network and the merchants um, that are already working um, with Klarna. So yeah, welcome, Rob. Um, Thank you very much. Good stuff. Uh, looking forward to having a chat with you guys and, and listening to your talk. Uh, today's audience, um, please feel free to put, post any comments in, in, in the chat function and I will do my best to, to get these guys to, to answer them at the end. So over to you, Dan. Awesome. Thank you, Yannick. And uh, yeah, thanks to everyone at JH and the whole team behind um, Meet Magento for putting on the event today and for hosting us. It's uh, much appreciated. So yeah, as Yannick said, we're going to be running through the uh, the buy now, pay later boom um, and what it means for retail. Um, so first up, just a little bit about Klarna. So Klarna has been around since 2005. Uh, we've grown an awful lot in that time. Um, so right now, Klarna is the largest provider of pay later services across the world. Um, and we've had a, ba a banking license since 2017 in Europe. Um, as you can see from the stats here, uh, we work with over 250,000 retailers globally. Uh, serving around about 90 million consumers um, across those brands. Um, and that is a number that grows roughly 30% year on year. Um, so we're a very product led business. Um, and you can see there, we've got just over one and a half thousand engineers within our uh, 4,000 total number of employees. So um, a, a kind of huge operation which, which spans um, a, across multiple continents. Um, we all know it's been a very tough year for retail. Um, but finally, the outlook looks brighter as the UK economy starts getting back into gear. Uh, while retailers will play a key role in driving the economic recovery, uh, the pandemic obviously has had, a, has had and will have a long lasting impact. Um, retailers and everyone else really will have to adapt to our new normal um, as consumers. We've drastically changed the way we shop, pay, save and engage with brands over the past year. Um, some existing trends have accelerated, in particular when it comes to online shopping and new ways to pay. Uh, a statement that we feel kind of encapsulates that is um, to stay relevant and grow profits post-pandemic, retailers and brands must co closely monitor their audience and adapt their offerings accordingly. Um, so as such, I'm going to hand over to Rob just to run through uh, a little bit more about BMPL in a bit more detail. Thank you, Dan. Um, so yeah, I just want to touch on, um, I guess, what we're seeing in, in terms of a shift in consumer credit and ultimately the rise of, of buy now, pay later. Um, yeah, like mentioned there, it, you know, it's, it's fast becoming a, um, a, a you know, very popular payment method. Um, much has been written about the inevitable extinction of, of cash and, um, you know, as people increasingly turn to cards, mobile and electronic wallets to, to make payments, um, I think what we're seeing as well is 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 um, you know credit cards maybe on the way out too. So, um, next slide, please, Dan. 
Um, unsurprisingly, 2020 saw a 32% increase in, in online retail sales, and that was compared to, to 2019. Um, during the pandemic, however, the, the fall in, in the use of cash has, has been even sharper. So um, January 2021 volumes almost 50% lower with the year before. Um, and at Klarna, we know consumers are um, preferring debit cards, mobile wallets, and buy now, pay later solutions to, to make their payments. So Whilst debit card volumes have, have tripled over the past decade, um, they jumped from roughly 17 billion in, in 2019 to, to um, just over 5 billion, uh, sorry, from just over 5 billion in 2009. Um, and then in terms of, of credit card spending specifically, um, monthly credit card lending fell from 18 billion in, in Feb of last year to a low of, of 10 billion in, in April. So um, a 47% decrease in, in credit card spending. Um, and that really is, is um, I, I guess, the or well, that is the cue to, to the rise of buy now, pay later. So, you know, whilst consumers really value the, the flexibility, the convenience and, and security of buy now, pay later, similarly, merchants are benefiting from seller protection and, um, you know, able to transfer some of that risk of um, late payments or, or, or non-payment, should I say, to, to the buy now, pay later providers. So um, data showing that consumers are becoming more responsible with how they spend, um, especially when it comes to, to, to credit cards. Um, I think the pandemic has really shown us how people, particularly millennials, are, are working hard to reduce their, their credit card um, debt and spending. So in, in the UK alone, over 10 million people used buy now, pay later services to buy something online in, in 2020. Um, and, and whilst it is rapidly growing, we are very much at the beginning of, of this journey. So buy now, pay later transactions at the moment in the UK represent less than 4% of all credit card transactions um, in, in 2020. Um, and whilst it does only represent a small percentage of sales, it's already driving some huge benefits to the consumers. So if all buy now, pay later purchases in the last year have been made using a, a credit card, um, it could have cost consumers a whopping 76 million in interest charges alone. And that's not to mention other charges like uh, mispayment fees or, or membership fees, for example. Um, so as, as buy now, pay later increases its share of the market, the, I, I guess there's a lot of potential for consumers to, to really save hundreds of millions of, of pounds um, in interest in, and, and fees each year. And also worth highlighting here that um, 64 percent of adults who have used buy now, pay later actually thought it helped them manage their finances. Um, next slide, Dan. So to, to add to that, um, you know, the, the banking and, and payments industry is, is really an industry that's lost touch with their audience. Um, people's perception of financial brands is really an image of boring, slow moving, inside out thinkers who will really do whatever it takes to, to rob you before, you know, before you realize what's what's happening. And, you know, at the core there, they're really all all the same. Um, We've got some data here. So um, taking a look at, at, at some of this data, we can see on the graph on, on the left there that um, roughly 40% of, of consumers have used buy now, pay later services between two to four times in 2020. Um, looking at the next graph along to, to the right, it's the 25 to 34 year old age group who, who really are spending more than any other age group. And interestingly, the, the 18 to 24 year old less than than any other. Um, I think there's there's a common misconception that a, a typical buy now pay later shopper is is young and you know has has maybe less disposable income. But actually, the average age of the Klarna shopper in the UK is 35, um, and it was the the 45 to 54 age group actually that grew faster than any other in terms of um, Klarna spend throughout the the pandemic. Um, and then on, on on the right there. Um, again, 18 to 24 age group with the lowest average spend per order with 35 to, to 44 spending roughly £100 um, on, on average per order. Um, and then interesting there at the bottom, if, if buy now, pay later wasn't available, there was an overwhelming number of, of people who um, would have shopped using a, a credit card. Absolutely. And I think just, just to add to that, the kind of key stat that stands out for me on, that, on those graphs is that the second one along with the 55 plus uh, age group spending very close to second um, yeah. the, the kind of most amount of money we're using buy now pay later which is kind of goes against that that misconception like you said yep definitely um 
So in, in terms of, of buy now later and um, buy now pay later and, and what it offers, and um, really it's all the positives of, of credit. So flexible payments, try before you buy, loyalty programs, et cetera, but um, all really without the hassle of, of big banks giving you sky high interest rates um, and, and really keeping the consumer informed right throughout the checkout so they always feel in, in control. Um, so I think what, what we're seeing is, is, is users have, have turned to buy now pay later for a variety of reasons. Um, and they're beyond interest-free credit. So um, for one, it's, it's simplified the online shopping experience by making it possible to, to purchase items like clothing before paying for them. Um, you know, customers can return unwanted items and, and only pay for, for the ones that they keep or try before you buy. Um, other factors cited by uh, a recent YouGov survey of buy now, pay later users included feeling much more secure in purchases from um, maybe small or unfamiliar retailers. So you land on site, you see the Klarna logo, that almost is a, a sort of badge of, of trust. Um, and then as, as I've already touched on, the majority of, of consumers who use buy now, pay later also say it helps them in, in terms of managing their, their finances. Um, so yeah, just to, to sort of back that up, um, yeah, really, really highlighting, I, I guess, the benefits, including flexibility, security and, and convenient returns as sort of key reasons to, to choose buy now, pay later. Absolutely. And I think uh, unless unless you've been under a rock for the last two years, you would have uh, you would have seen our, our, our marketing team pumping out some fantastic campaigns, both from a B2B perspective and also um, more prominently from a, a B2C perspective. So um the latest of which is is dispelling the myths um so despite us building a loyal and loving core consumer audience um Klarna has faced a, a a kind of backlash from from certain journalists and campaigners who who seem determined to kind of discredit the 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 the, the um consumer offering that we have um so we've become a, a slight scapegoat for, for kind of broader issues around debt and, and financial fraud and um we've become a very easy and a, a very kind of pink <laughs> uh, target for any journalist um with a bit between their teeth so you can see uh, a few of the articles here which we um kind of foresaw, foresaw as, as as untrue so um we went about creating a campaign which which discovered the truth um so uh, as I say, our, our very talented marketing team and, and agencies that we work with um, put together an interactive out of the home campaign whereby consumers could go up to these fantastic murals that were across the country, um, scan a QR code and actually play a, an interactive game which dispelled um, some of the truths um, or some of the mis mistruths, should I say, um, uh, about Klarna. So this one here was in, in Shoreditch in London. Um, and you can see here um, a, a couple of the, the, the kind of myths that, that were going around the, the industry and, and the truths that we'd like to, to kind of align closer with. So the first of which is Klarna is only for fashionistas. Um, and the, uh, the, the truth of that is that no, you can actually use Klarna at over 13,000 UK retailers, which spans across multiple verticals, not just, uh, not just fashion. Um, uh, another one there with Klarna could hypnotize you into thinking you're not spending real money. Um, and as we all know, there's no such thing as free money. And, and we very prominently display uh, the payment breakdowns, due dates within the checkout so that um, consumers can actually see how that works before they're placing any orders. Um, moving on to a couple of more. So one of my favorite is Klarna is evil, um, making money from hidden and late fees. Uh, obviously not true. So our pay later products never charge interest on late fees and the re retailer pays for the fee, not you. Um, so like Rob said, looking to kind of turn that um, that use of interest around um, uh, and kind of pass that cost on to, onto a retailer as opposed to a consumer. So in essence, it is a very consumer friendly product. Um, and Klarna is too pink and weird to be trustworthy. Um, well, we do like to stand out, but we, we process millions of transactions all around the world every day. Um, and trust is, is of the utmost importance to us. Um, so we've done a, a couple of kind of big bang campaigns again out of the home, which is, is looking to kind of drive awareness of, um, of Klarna, but also of the, um, of the benefit of using a buy now pay later provider over a credit card. So, um, you can see here, we've, we've kind of, 
um, plastered across uh, across taxis and, and and billboards the 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 amount of money that UK consumers are saving by using buy now pay later as opposed to credit cards um, and the amount of UK shoppers which have have signed up um, to this way of, of 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 kind of checking out so 14 million UK consumers which is a a, a remarkable number um, are now using buy now pay later on a, on a regular basis so um, so yeah that's kind of the the overarching um, messaging that we're trying to, to kind of push out there to to highlight and to dispel any any myths and a couple of kind of consumer feedback here around around the the kind of buy now pay later um, offering and and the benefits that they see from a consumer standpoint as well. Um, and, and next up, what we wanted to touch upon was the fact that um, buy now, pay later isn't just a payment method at the end of the checkout. So it's much more than that. And what we're looking to do is kind of build a marketing machine behind the payment method, which actually adds value to our uh, to our partner merchants. So um, we've created a, a marketing engine across multiple channels to add value um, and we drive traffic to retailer sites by leveraging our, our ecosystem. So this includes, includes social, CRM, our app, our website, shop directory, and much more, um, as well as social, CRM, um, and partnering with influencers and PR agencies to actually get an, uh, an even wider spread um, to, our, to our audience and drive relevant traffic to our merchant partners um, in order to kind of increase conversion. I think, um, I think that there as well, Dan, just worth yeah. calling out the, the shopping app. Um, you know, I think globally now it's had something like 35 million downloads. And that really is, as a consumer, is is is, is where you can look at the, the sort of end-to-end -end shopping experience. So, you know, you might land in the app. Um, that's where you start your shopping journey out to the real as, retailer's website. You can even purchase in the app, actually, if you want. Yeah. You take the order. You're then managing all your orders, all your finances, everything in, in, in that app. So so it really is more than just a, a buy now, pay later service. And as I say, it's, it's the sort of end-to-end -end, um, sort of shopping journey, really. Exactly. Um, and buy now, pay later um, sort of touches the consumer across the, the whole funnel. So we just wanted to run through a few examples of, of kind of where this happens. So from a from an acquisition perspective, it's, it's obviously all about winning hearts and minds. And at this stage of the funnel, we're not trying to get too close, uh, but every single in, uh, digital interaction obviously needs to count. So, so we like to think about how we can intelligently advertise the, the payment solutions that you've got in order to uh, encourage the shopper to visit, visit your brand site or store. Um, and a fantastic example of this is, is one of our, our retail partners, Cox & Cox, who I believe Ainsley is speaking at some point today, whether it's, I think it's after us. Um, so they've, they've worked fantastically with us over the year, over the last year and a half or so. Um, and you can see here, um, in terms of acquiring new customers, 50% of partner sales um, bring net new customers to their brand. Um, which is a huge number, um, considering the, the amount of time and effort and money that brands spend acquiring new customers. Um, and they also saw a 20% increase in web traffic as a result of collaborating with, with our marketing team. Um, so some, some fantastic results there from, from Cox & Cox. Um, next up is, is conversion. So um, convenience is key uh, and it's proven that friction causes frustration. Um, so this is true at every stage of the customer journey and, and, and retailers and brands uh, need to offer clarity at every step or, or obviously they risk that abandonment of, uh, of baskets. Um, so we can see here from a, from a H&M perspective, um, they saw 50% of, of mobile shop shoppers choosing Klarna, um, which is again a, a kind of huge number and testament to the, uh, to the kind of consumer experience that, that we built. Um, and an 11% uplift in, in conversion within their app on people that were using Klarna as well. So again, a real, real testament to that consumer, um, consumer journey, especially on mobile, um, but, but across the board. Nice. And then if we look at the, the retention piece, so, um, you know, you've as, as a retailer or a brand, you've you've gone to all the hard work of actually acquiring and, and converting a new customer, but still so many drop the ball from here. And um, I, I think at this point, it's really just sort of making sure that you you lock in the love. 40% um, of consumers are loyal to, to a couple of brands. Um, this is really where you need to build a trust, engage and, and really drive loyalty with with great experiences. So a nice example there. Um, another Magento merchant who who who, who implemented Klarna in the last year or so, 
and um, instantly saw you know really really good results from from our loyal um, consumer network. Um, and then and then lastly, the, the fourth pillar, um, certainly not least, I guess this is the the holy grail of of turning shoppers into brand ambassadors and, and advocates. Um, I don't have the magic answer here, sadly, but um, you know this is where things like reviews. Uh, loyalty programs, referral marketing, um, you know, and, and user generated content really come into play. So mm -hmm. highlighted there are just a few factors that, that make consumers most likely to recommend retailers or, or, or leave a positive review. So things like an enjoyable install experience, a good experience across all devices and channels, and, and lastly, a good, um, a good returns process. Um, that's it. That's it for our for our um, our presentation. I think we've still got a few minutes for for questions. If if anyone anyone has any, be kind to us, Yannick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, there's a few that have come directly to me. Uh, I've seen a few questions. If you don't mind me, um, so one of them was uh, plans for growth internationally. You know, I know um, we have a few of our clients that have asked about this. So yeah, you know, if you could let us know. Uh, your thoughts on that? Uh, absolutely. And, and I mean, international expansion is something that I've been um, seriously impressed with since, since I joined Klarna. So even during lockdown last year, we managed to launch um, four new markets, which included actually opening offices within those um, within those regions, which is a phenomenal, um, a phenomenal uh, result. And that included Belgium, Spain, Italy and Canada. Um, we've got France just about to go live um, and we've got around about 10 to 12 new territories that we're looking to expand into um, in the next sort of 12 months or so. Um, so I know that Portugal, Poland, Mexico are all on that list. Um, and we are guided by some of our bigger merchants as to um, where they would like us to, to be offering Klarna. And we also work with some of our um, some of our technology partners to help expand into those markets as well. So the likes of um, cross border platforms such as as globally and eShop World, um, they they kind of assist us in in those expansion plans. So um, so yeah, we've we've got sort of huge um, plans for, for for growth. And there was talk internally of a kind of a hundred plus new markets within the next twenty four months. So um, so some really kind of aggressive um, geographical expansion plans. And uh, and yeah, we're uh, we're kind of full steam ahead when it comes to, to, to that kind of thing yeah yeah excellent um got a question from natalie yeah um does buy now pay later just increase the return rate for brands or does it actually help increase revenue should we take that one rob you can do yeah yeah so so it's actually been proven um that uh, we've actually got some some stats around paying three actually reducing return rates so one of the um one of the key reasons for return returns of purchase anxiety and not not then having enough money with, within that month to um to cover the cost of the purchase whereas obviously being able to spread the cost out over a few months um actually reduces that that risk and, and reduces the number of returns um with with pay later so our, our deferred payment option that does slightly increase returns um, however it does in massively increase purchase frequency so the overarching number of, of, to of total revenue is is still much higher okay no, just, uh, just to add to that i think on, on average you know client consumers have a it's a 45 percent higher purchase frequency so those top returners are probably likely to be, you know, your top earners at the same time. Um, so I think it's just having a slight change of, of in mindset around returns. Excellent. Um, there's one from Warwick here around, do you have any benefits for retailers other than marketing from your app and the ease of use? Um, um, yeah, sorry, on. go on, mate. Go on, Dan. I was going to say that probably touches on what, we, what you were talking about earlier with the media services potentially. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, I, I guess as, as we touched on, you know, Klarna isn't just a payment method. There's a whole host of services that um, that sort of sit outside of that. So uh, to give you a couple of examples, we, we acquired uh, a business called Shoptail um, in, in the last year. So we now have our own Klarna sort of Google comparison shopping service. Um, we're seeing retailers utilize Klarna almost as a, an affiliate network. So they may not even be offering Klarna as a payment method on site, but they're working with us to, um, to tap into that, that sort of, that consumer network, that loyal consumer network that we've, that we've talked about. Um, 
and then things like the shop directory, for example, you know, it's a lot of the marketing channels that, you know, that, 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 that Dan was talking about, but yeah, really, really, you know, touching the retailer and consumer at, at, at every stage of the, 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 the customer journey. Excellent. Some good comments coming in there. Um, there's another one. Yeah. Can you share a little more information on the demand generation services that you guys offer? Yeah, so that 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 actually that just feeds into to exactly what I was talking about there. So um, using Klarna and utilizing that the sort of affiliate network. Um, uh, yeah, so it's, it's exactly yeah. What I, yeah, what yeah I think we about. we see that across clients that um, when they see the buy now pay later or the Klarna login, then they obviously feel a lot more safer in in knowing that they don't have to you know add more details in and they're just leveraging that. So I think that yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Okay, excellent. Um, I think there's a juicy one here about what is on, <laughs> on uh, uh, regulation, right? I know you guys yeah. can did cover the regulation side, but you know it's, it's something that comes up regularly with the yeah, it does. Topic. It does. Uh, and, Rob's and, favorite and, topic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, right, rightly so. You know, it's it's still a relatively new product to, to the UK. Um, I think I think firstly it's worth pointing out what well, Dan has already pointed out. We're we're a bank, you know, we're a fully licensed bank, so we're used to working in a heavy heavily regulated environment already. Um, in terms of so there was a there was a review uh, so Q three Q four of last year the Woolard review which was looking at the buy now pay later sector and um, some recommendations have have been made off the back of that we were actually heavily involved in that process and. I guess fully support and and welcome you know the the recommendations that are are being made. I think the 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 beauty about regulation is it's going to bring the whole market in line. So where there are other providers who might charge interest and late fees, and that's almost a revenue stream for them. You know, hopefully what 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 regulation will do is is just bring 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 or sort of set a sort of level playing field um, across the board. So um, I, I guess at this stage we're just waiting to hear you know exactly how it's going to pan out. But yeah, something we fully sort of support and, and welcome to be honest. Excellent, excellent. Um... One from me, uh, I noticed, you know, you talk about catering for um, different audiences, yeah, you know, part of Peter Sheldon's talk was around Generation Z and stuff, you know, do you guys mm -hmm. see any, you know, going to comment a bit on, on maybe that side of things or how do you see that? Um, yeah, I, I think... I think we, we referenced referenced the fact a couple of times that actually it's it's the older generation who are adopting Klarna faster than any other, and I think you know that probably, I guess lockdown probably helped accelerate that. There's probably a lot of people who weren't used to shopping online who have started shopping online. They're seeing Klarna as a payment method on you know the bigger retailers' websites and get used to using it. And 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 as we touched on, that's then a you know, a sort of a, a trusted and, and secure way for them to pay. So, um, yeah, yeah. As I say, it's it's interesting to see the the sort of um, the growth in those older demographics, and 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 actually, that's probably been accelerated by our expansion into other verticals as well. You know, you, th you think about homeware and um, home and garden DIY. You know, all this sort of stuff that's um, I guess naturally has maybe a slightly older sort of um, audience. Okay. No, excellent. Uh, I don't see any further questions uh, there, guys. So um, yeah, maybe we can start wrapping up. Any final thoughts? Or I think uh, it was it was really informative from our side. I think uh, you know it's something that I think you know retailers need to be keeping their eye on. And if they they probably not got by now, pay later, they should be considering it. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, I guess just to say thanks again. For, for having us uh, thanks to, to everybody that's listening in for, for joining us this morning and um, yeah I guess if anyone's got any further questions off the back of it feel free to reach out to, to myself or Rob and we'll, we'll happily uh, happily try and provide the answers for you okay well thank you Dan thank you Rob thank um, you very much appreciate uh, you having us